Welcome back to another episode of the Sales Gravy Podcast. On this episode, I'm going to be having a conversation with Stu Heineck, who is the author of Weeds and How to Get a Meeting with Anyone. And before we get started, I want you to go check out Sales Gravy University. Sales Gravy University is a one of a kind platform that allows you to take on demand courses and take live courses with peers from around the globe. And this is why so many companies and so many individual salespeople use Sales Gravy University for professional development. And if you've never taken a course on Sales Gravy University, you can go right now to learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com. Use the code free course for the very first time, and you can take any course on the platform. Stu, welcome to the Sales Gravy Podcast. Yeah, I'm going to be seeing you really soon at the uh, uh, Outbound yeah. Conference. Yeah, well, yeah. thank you so much, Jeb. I can't wait to join you. Gosh, it's about a week away. So in the pre-show, you and I were talking about um, this, this concept of really cool stories uh, from salespeople who have gotten, like, landed these dream meetings with their dream clients, as Anthony Anarino would say. And, uh, and you were talking about some of the, you know, just the, the return on investment for coming up with some creative ideas. And in fact, to get on this podcast, you sent me this big old board that was a cartoon that you drew that had, um, I think when Jeb Blunt talks about prospecting, or Jeb Blunt says that, uh, that he can tell uh, anything about a person by the size of their pipeline, which is true. <laughs> um, so so I, I guess I want to start off with one of your favorite stories about landing a, a meeting with a high value, high quality prospect that was just completely out of the box. Well, I mean, God, there's so many of them, Jeb. And the thing is, we, we all need to get meetings. If you can't get meetings, you can't sell, you can't do anything. Nothing happens in business. So, so it's an age old problem. We've been doing it for a long, all of us. We've been doing it for a very, very long time. So there are great stories out there. And I'm just, I, I still feel like I'm just scratching the surface. One of my favorites was, um, is the one that Dan Waldschmidt does. I don't, I, do you know Dan at all? I don't, I don't know if I you do. know his you know, edgy conversations. This guy's this guy's crazy. This guy runs hundred mile races and and he wins. I mean, he's an ultra competitive athlete. And anyway, he's he's also a turnaround specialist and one of the one of the top sales bloggers. And so he was he shared with me the story of how he reaches CEOs of companies that are in trouble that that might need his turnaround services. And what he does is he, uh, when he finds, it comes the business news every morning for stories of missed earnings estimates, when he finds one, he has this beautiful sword made by the prop maker who made all the swords for the movie Gladiator years ago. So there's these beautiful swords and they're engraved with the CEO's name and they, they're put in this beautiful wooden box with a handwritten note. I love this handwritten note part because there's no branding on it at all. There's no logo, it's just a handwritten note which is actually all the branding you, in the world because it's very confident in, in, his, in what, he's, uh, what he's putting out there. So he, he, he writes this note and says, dear so-and-so, um, you know, business is Warren. I noticed you lost a battle recently. I just wanted to let you know if you ever need a few extra hands in battle, we've got your back. That's what the sword's for. <laughs> and, and he's getting 100% response to this thing. And, and that's, that's just amazing. Um, but you know, to, to like the highest... ROI to these campaigns, and I'm going to share with you real quickly because they're crazy metrics. The highest ROI that I know of to a to a contact marketing campaign is 69 million five hundred thousand percent. That's a number. I like. How do you even understand a number like that? And and then the highest response rate is somewhere over 300 <laughs> percent. Another number. It's like how can you? I understand 100 percent response. You know that's that's easy to, to to understand. All of the people that were contacted connected. That's that's really easy. But but when it's over a hundred percent, that means that the thing that you sent is so compelling. People are sharing it, and the people they're sharing it with are saying, "Would you mind if I write down this guy's number because I'd like to respond also." Right. So they they can be just amazing in terms of response and and return on investment, and really just in terms of helping you grow your business. It's one of the re ways that I use my books is I'll take a book, I'll put a, a handwritten note in the front of the book and sign it and then send it with another note out to a CEO or to an executive. And it's amazing how many of them will pick up the phone and call us and say, thank you for sending us the book. And it's an easy way to move into a conversation. These these campaigns can be expensive, so I, I'm, I'm very picky about who I'm sending something to. I'm not sending something blind. but 
for example, in Dan's situation, he knows that there's a qualified prospect there because he can read in the business news that this company is having a problem. He didn't just pull a list off someplace and then and you know then start sending things. But one of the things that 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 uh, that I did in the past was, and we were talking about this in the pre-show, is it, you can go to Walmart.com. You can still buy these things. I've, I've been buying them since the '90s. They're talking parrots. They're like in a little cage. <laughs> And they've got feathers on them. They're blue and white and red and yellow. And, uh, and you can push the button and you can talk to the parrot. And then when you push the button again, the parrot will say back to you whatever you said to the parrot. So if I was having an executive that was having a hard time getting in touch with, and, and just typically this would have been after multiple voicemail messages, multiple snail mails, where you know, I'd sent letters and sent notes and you know, multiple emails and even showing up their location where I still wasn't getting in touch with them and I knew that they were qualified. So for me, they were moving into a buying window and if I didn't get in touch with them, that buying window might close that I would, I would, my last ditch effort, I, was, I would put it in a FedEx box. That makes it important. Like you put it in something that comes via FedEx or UPS or you know, that type of thing, they're more likely to open it. And then I would just take a note and I would tape it on there and put an arrow to it and <laughs> said, push me. And then they would, they would push it and I would try to find something you know, interesting to say to them. They, 100% of the time, they would call back. And they would, <sighs> and they would call and, they would, and they, a lot of times they were laughing. Now, that didn't mean I got the meeting every single time, because sometimes they would say, listen, this is great, but I'm not going to do business with you, thanks. But at least I got to, you know, got to talk to them. But in most cases, yeah. I, would, I would get in, uh, and you know, it was 30 bucks to, uh, to send the, the parrot over. But for me, it was, two, I think two things were involved in that. One, I knew that there was a buying window. I knew that they were qualified. And I knew that it was worth the effort to try to get in front of them because because even if I converted 10% of those, I you know I was but the ROI on it was thousands of percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I you know I'm just hearing that the parrot story for the first time this morning, and and I love that. I've never heard it. I, I didn't know anything about the parrots. So I think that that's a great device. And and I think what was happening is, you know. Tell me if you agree, because I think what was happening was you humanized yourself suddenly. They weren't returning your calls. I don't know. You were someone they didn't know or didn't. I, something wasn't connecting. But suddenly when you did, when you were willing to take that risk and and, you know, that was a really entertaining way to do it. I mean, that's why it's so much fun to, to talk about these campaigns. Then then suddenly they're saying, wait a minute, I, you know, hey, I've not been calling Jeff back. I've got, I need to call him back, even if we're not going to do business. And, and that's a that's a valuable yeah. thing for you to know. I mean, if, if because you have a conversation started, it might turn into, well, we're under contract, call me in two years. That's really valuable information um, that you wouldn't have had otherwise. So I, I, it just really counts to, to break through to these people and do it in a way that has them saying, you know what, I love the way this guy thinks. This is, I got to talk to him. Well, I think, that, I think what you said about humanizing it makes a lot of sense because Sadly, what, what's happened to a large swath of the sales world is that we've moved from picking up the phone and calling people or going out and just walking in their front door and saying hello to them to just sending email after email after email, spam after spam after spam. And it's very, very hard to humanize an email. I got one this morning that was humanized and I, I, I was impressed by it. I responded and they got a meeting. But that's one out of 10,000 emails that I get. One of the things that, that that you sent me a few years ago was like a frame with a video in it. So you can, in, in, they, they make these like little letters that you, it's a card and you can create a video on it. And I teach salespeople, like let's say that you go to Stu's place of business and you walk in the front and the gatekeeper stops you and you want to meet with, with Stu. What keeps you from standing on front of Stu's building with your camera and do a video and tell Stu that you're here, I really want to meet with you, and then send them the video in front of their location. That humanizes you as well. It makes it real for them, and it shows them that you care enough to make an effort. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, one of my favorite movies, if you kind of, if you discount the Oscars slap, <laughs> is Hitch. And, and, and you know, I, I would advise anyone who wants to look, see what the effect of these campaigns looks like, in real time, watch the movie Hitch because he uses a lot of a lot of the same kinds of devices that we can be using in sales to break through. He was trying to break through to his love interest, but you can watch these things happening in real time. And, and it's just 
I, I you know, when you do those things, whether it's re recording a video out front or maybe you show up with with a device, let me show you this. Um, if you show up with a device that you know you're going to hand the the, re the receptionist, like something like this, <laughs> would be just a and just a you know it has a card in it. Maybe it has a Starbucks card in there, and you're saying, I, you know, I, I've I've just stopping by and I just wanted to see if the if so and so is available. If they're not, I want to you know, would you give them this because. Um, you know, I want to. I, I just want to have a quick conversation with them, maybe over a cup of coffee. They'll oftentimes, they'll, if you've done something that oh, kind of overwhelms their resistance, they'll they'll say, "Wait, hang on a second. <laughs> they'll even tell you he's not available. And then you hand this something like this, and they'll say, "Wait a minute, hang on a second." <laughs> yeah. And they go back and they get them. So, so I was having a conversation with uh, Jeffrey Gittimer uh, a couple of years ago about this type of this type of device or this type of way, especially if you show up and you get stopped by the gatekeeper. And he's, you know, Jeffrey's got that personality. It's probably better than my personality for like just really quickly throwing out a joke or, you know, or coming up with something to get their attention. Like he would like do a multiple choice test for them or have them pick a card. But, he, but his whole point was exactly that, that if you're dealing with a gatekeeper, and it's easier to do this in person with a gatekeeper than it is on the phone. It's the gatekeeper on the phone is going to be a little bit more Kurt with you, as, as we might say, but but in person, if you tell a joke and you get them laughing, then you'll get yeah. past that. So, for example, one of the things that, that I would do with hard to get into accounts that I, again, know them in the buying window is that I would show up and 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 I'm I'm I win mostly through brute force. I'm persistent to a to a fault. I will call you a million times until you tell me to go away. But I would show up and the, you know, the gatekeeper would go, didn't I just tell you last week that we're not going to buy any of that? And, and so I would do it just enough so I'd finally get them to the edge where they're just they're starting to get irritated with me. And I would go, yeah, you did tell me that. And I totally get it. It's just that I, I hadn't gotten my quota of rejection today and it was getting a little bit late in the day. So I thought I would come by here and let you reject me so I can <laughs> I could end the day as a winner. And they would laugh every single time. And the moment they broke, they were like, come over here. I'll, let me see if I can get you in. Boom. And and so it was just that 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 process of getting them to again, you're humanizing it like you're making it fun for them. And they're seeing that, you know, you're a real person and and that matters. I've, also, I've yeah. also used that. Hey, I'm a real person. I'm a salesperson. I got to feed my family. I got to pay my mortgage. I got to do my pay my bills just like you. So I'm going to keep coming by here because I don't have any other choice. This is how I make my living. So I would really yeah. have, you know, really love it if you could just help me out. Yeah, I think that's great. And I love what you just said about if you can make people laugh, which you did, you know, that was my, my quota for, for rejection. Thank you. I just hit it. <laughs> um, but well, I have a I have a secret weapon and weeds love secret weapons. I mean, they live on not I'm sorry, secret advantage and they they live on on secret advantages. So one of mine is that I'm one of the Wall Street Journal cartoonists as well. So I've got lots of cartoons to send to people. And you know, uh, there's one, one of my favorites is if I've made a proposal and it's and then it goes dead. God, how many how many times have we all gone through that? Well, I have this cartoon of this guy. He's he's and I, and I send it as a as a signed, you know, frameable print with a with a note um, saying, sorry, it didn't work out this time, maybe next time. But the guy, the, the cartoon is this guy is cradling the arm or the, the phone on his shoulder. He's going through some papers and he's saying, Hey, listen, we got your proposal and we like everything except having to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the problem with every proposal, right? <laughs> right. But, yeah. um, but that gets people, it's like dragging a string around the corner, uh, yeah. in front of a cat, you know, they can't resist. So, they end up picking the phone and saying, well, you know, I got this. Thank you. That wasn't actually the problem. It was the timing or whatever. They'll tell you. They'll If you can engage people in those conversations, then you have the chance to move them. You're exactly right. Now, like a couple other stories. Um, executive I'm trying to get in touch with won't return my phone calls. So I go to their office really, really early in the morning and I park in the executive's parking spot. That didn't work out very well. Just... <laughs> Because because I was there and the guy you know shows up and I go hey I'm here I was waiting for you I'll move my car now that didn't work however uh, a, a, a president of a, of a Fortune 200 company was telling a story to his salespeople about a rep that showed up super early in the morning 5 a.m. 
and was sitting on the front steps of their headquarters waiting for him to come in. And he was wow. so impressed that the person would, would show up and do that, that that person got the meeting and ended up getting the business. So there's, you know, there's, a, there's a give and take. Like there, there are things where you can be over the top, and that was a little over the top to go park in the executive parking spot. And there are things that really wins the hearts and minds of those individuals who probably were weeds at some point in their life, right? And they <laughs> recognize themselves and the individual who has the gumption to sit there and wait for them on the front steps. And, and so th that's, that's my next question to you is, uh, is how do you find that balance? Like, how do you find the balance of being sincere and authentic um, and, and trying to get someone's attention and get them to engage, but being careful not to cross the line so it either becomes overly cheesy or, you know, they feel like you're trying to manipulate them uh, and it becomes much more, um, you know, put off putting to them versus causing them to lean in. Well, you know, I think that's a great question. And I, I think that whenever we're selling, whenever we're on the phone, whenever we're in contact with with these people, it's an audition. So really auditioning, not only to do business with them, but, you know, you're a CEO and I, I run my business. Our vendors are part of our team as well. And so we want the best people in, in, on our team. And when you see things like someone saying, I'm willing to, st I've been waiting here since five in the morning for you to show up, to come <laughs> to walk up these stairs, they're, they, they, you have to be thinking, if, you, if you're on the other end of that, you have to be thinking that this is the kind of person who has the kind of commitment to what they're doing that I want. I mean, that's, that's, we, that's rare. It's a, it's a, and it's, it's refreshing. So I would say that's part of it. Another part of it is if it's, if it's kind of just auto, if it's automated um, and you can, and it's, and you can tell that it's automated, think about all those yeah. automated requests that you're getting to connect on LinkedIn, very, very off putting. If it's about, I just saw you speak or I just read your book. I, I got to think that, Anybody who writes an email to you and says, Jeb, I just read your latest book. Oh my gosh, what a great book. And I had one question. I'm sure they get responses from you. Every single time, 100% oh. of the time. In fact, I wrote in Fanatical Prospecting, if you want to get in touch with me, that's how you do it. Personalize it, make it about me. I'm going to respond to you. Yeah, I mean, those things cause us to melt. It's like, well, you bought my book? That's fantastic. Of course, I'll talk to you. So, uh, so, but I mean, so relevance and, and timeliness is another one, but but you asked about authenticity, and I think if if you're if you're doing something that's like let's say if you're sending a part of you, a piece of you, um, it cer certainly seems to show up in a in a in a huge way. And you know, of course, I'm I'm a cartoonist, and people ask all the time in these interviews. But what if you're not a cartoonist? But you know, like anything that you do, there was a story that that Kenny Madden shared with me of a woman who loved to knit, and he said, "Okay, perfect." you need to knit something something for the person you're reaching out to. And, and in fact, he suggested, because he, he said, look, here's you've got a client that's merging with another. So knit them a, a scarf that has the colors of their of their two logos combined somehow, and then just wait. And that's, so she did, sent it out and waited a couple of weeks. And uh, and then they, they, they called up and said, we got this thing from you and we were waiting for you to call. And, <laughs> and you know, thank you so much for, I, I can see what it is. And thank you so much. What do you do? And yeah. so I, it really is about showing up, showing up as a human being, as, you know, living, breathing, maybe a funny human being, maybe not, I don't know, but whatever, certainly a de determined human being, that really shows up to people that are making these decisions, these buying decisions. I love it. And all it takes is a little creativity, getting out of the box, and, uh, and in some cases, being a weed. So before we go, I want you to talk real yeah. quickly about your brand new book, Weeds, which is awesome. Uh, you just sent me a package of dandelion um, seeds, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weed up my yard. Um, I was going to say, I hope you didn't plant those. <laughs> so, so, so before we go, first of all, you got to go get Stu's book, uh, How to Get a Meeting with Anybody. It's brilliant. We recommend it to all of our clients. It's awesome. Uh, this new book is really cool because it's about grind and grit and what it takes to, 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 to be the type of person that's able to overcome all the odds and survive. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, so actually the name of the book is How to Grow Your Business Like a Weed. And we all know what it means to grow like a weed, but 
I'm surprised. I'm shocked that there is, I don't think there has been a book before that has said, okay, we know what it means to grow like a weed, but what, how are they actually doing it? And how can we, if they have a model, if there's a unified model to it, can we apply it to our businesses? So I've gone, I've been the lucky guy to do that actually. <laughs> so, because weeds are just awesome. You watch what they do in your yard. They're, they're fearsome and they, they, they never give up and they've got amazing things that they do. So actually there is a model. I'll tell you what it is. They leverage a fierce mindset and unfair advantages against collective scale. And they do it according to a process that's well honed, but also absolutely open to changing to, 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 to meet new challenges. It's really their form of evolution, but it's those four levels of, 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 um, I strategy, I suppose, that that allow them to thrive the way they do. By the way, when I say weed mindset, I'm not talking about, hey, I'm like a bunch of guys sitting around <laughs> smoking dubs, <laughs> but really that fierceness that you see when you're out in your yard trying to control those things, you can't control yeah. them, right? Sure. I mean, they, 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 if you pull them, if you pull them out, they'll grow right back. If you knock them down, if you mow them, they grow right back. They, they're great examples of what we need to be in business. So uh, it, it's in essence, they, 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 they always deal with what is and instead of what they thought should be or what they were entitled to or any of those things that we do to ourselves to get in our way. They always deal with what is. They never do anything without an, without an unfair advantage. They never do anything alone. They're always working at scale. And they always focus on what makes them win. And I think that's a pretty great description of of what anyone should be uh, in, in business, actually. Perfect. Stu, tell people where they can find you and where they can find out more information about some of the devices and the ideas and the tools that you have to help them get a meeting with anyone. Well, um, come to my website. Uh, my, my author site is stuheinek.com. So S-T-U-H-E-I-N-E-C-K-E.com. You can get the first two chapters of How to Grow Your Business Like a Weed, for free there if you sign up in our in our list um and and there's information on both weed strategy how to how to apply weed strategy to your business and also how to get meeting get get a meeting with anyone very good awesome awesome to have you on uh, this is the first time you i think you and i've been on a podcast together so i know fantastic we'll get you back again and uh for folks who are listening Stu and i are working on a course for sales Grave university on how to get a meeting with anyone so we'll be working on that together and collaborating to get that up soon and if you want to take your very first course for free on Salesgravy University, this is for brand new customers. Go to learn.salesgravy.com. That's learn.salesgravy.com and use the code free course. We'll see you next time on the Salesgravy podcast.